Okay, hi. Uh, welcome to this bread red video. Um, we're really excited because we are setting up a community bakery and the idea behind the community bakery is that um, you can get to make your dough at home in a bucket like this and then you can bring it to the bakery and bake it off. So we're going to sort of do a trial run. So I'm here at home and I'm going to uh, make up a poulish and then make up my dough at home and then we're going to drive through to Fishhook to the little test bakery and bake it off. So let's start. So what you need um, obviously is a, is a scraper and a measuring jug that you'd need and obviously the bucket. And let's just say at this stage I've already been to the bakery and collected the ingredients that I need and I've brought them home in my bucket. So I have this a packet over there which is for my poolish or my pre-ferment and this packet over here which is for when I mix up the dough. And so the only other thing I need is water which I'm going to get from the sink. So let's mix up the poolish. The poolish is made up of a litre of water, it's made up of a kilogram of mixed flour, whole wheat and white, and it's made up of 10 grams of yeast. So if I open this packet and I have a look inside, um, there will be my 10 grams of yeast, and in here will be the flour for my, uh, for my poolish, or my pre-ferment. And this flour is all stone ground flour, um, so we're using artisanal methods or traditional methods of long fermentation. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bucket and get a litre of water into it. It's 600 grams and grams and milliliters are obviously the same and then I need 500 grams. That's 500 grams. Sorry? 400 grams. So that's 600 grams and 400 grams. Sorry, I made a mistake there. So I've got a litre of water. I can bring it back here. And uh, I can put my yeast in. And I'm just emptying the yeast in. And then I'm going to empty the flour. And then all I'm going to do is mix it together. I'll just put one hand in and give it a gentle mix. And what you get here is a kind of a very sloppy mix. Equal quality, equal quantities of flour and, and water. So it's quite sloppy and as we leave this overnight it will ferment up and uh, it'll come down again. So in the morning we'll have a nice pre-fermented Poolish. So that's really it. The first step for today is I make my pre-ferment or my poolish the day before so that when I get up the next morning I'm able to make up my dough. So we'll just leave this overnight. Alright, so now it's the next morning and we're ready to mix our dough. So uh, if you come and have a look at the bucket over here, you'll see we've got a nice pre-ferment that's fermented overnight it's risen up it's got a nice nice smell to it so from this we're going to add water um, and then we're going to add our our flour salt and yeast so let's get on to doing that right now and yeah so it'll be about four of these and then one with about 300 grams in. that's one Just under 300 so that's about right. So I put my 2750 water in here and my pre-ferment and all I'm going to do is just give it a little mix just to loosen up and mix in that so you can see it's lovely. Alright, 
All right. So now I'm going to add my flour and my salt and my yeast. Simply, I know this is the right amount of flour because it got scaled off. So I can just add it in. And then it goes. And what you'll notice is that the flour floats, which is very important for the mixing technique, which you'll learn now. And my yeast. And my salt. Right, and now I'm going to, to mix up the dough. So what I do is I put my hand in, I go underneath the flour to where the water is, and I lift up. Like that. So I just keep lifting up, and I'm not rushing, I'm not pushing down. Notice I'm not kneading the dough. I'm going down below the flour. I'm just lifting it into the air, and what you'll see is that pieces start to form like that. So I can just keep going. And slowly what's happening is the water and the flour, the salt and the yeast are all coming together. And the reason why it's good to have the flour floating on the water is that you don't then get the flour sticking to the bottom of the bucket. It makes it easier. And if you notice my technique, it's always upwards, it's not, I'm not pushing down at any stage. Now once I've got the dough mixed together, I can take my scraper with my other hand, I can just clean it off. So there wasn't a lot of mixing, if you notice it didn't take a long time. That's very important. With this dough you don't need to mix a lot. And so now we'll leave it for about 10 minutes. Um, and then we'll do it our first fold. Okay, so we've left the dough off the initial mix for about 10 minutes and now we're going to give it a fold. And as this dough develops over the next three to four hours, all we're going to do is give it regular folds. In the beginning we give them folds closer together, in other words, in shorter time and towards the end we can leave it for longer. So We'll give it a fold now 10 minutes and then we'll give it a fold at half an hour and then maybe an hour and then we can leave it a little bit longer before we give it a last fold. So when you do the fold, one of the things you've got to do is make sure that you use water. So if you have a look over here, I'm putting a lot of water on my arm and I've got a bucket over here with water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by scraping down the sides. So I come in and I scrape down the sides. So once I've scraped down the sides and I want to try and get right in and just scrape along the bottom and then once I've done that I'm going to put my scraper down make sure my hands nice and wet and I'm going to go in and I lift it up I push it into the middle I lift it up I push it into the middle I lift it up push it into the middle do a few of those, wet my hand again, and I keep doing this until I feel the dough slightly stiffen and come together. So you can see I'm pushing it down with my hand in the middle, let me just do that slowly so you can have a good look. So I go down on the side, I get underneath it, I pull the dough up, over, put it in the middle and push down, okay, then I turn the bucket and I go to the next one, I go in on the side, pick it up, stretch it into the middle, push down. So let me do that at, at real time so you can see. Okay, and once I've done that, 
I'm ready to leave the dough for another 20 minutes. Right, so we're ready to do that second fold right now. Um, get my hand nice and moist. I'm going to scrape down the bucket, but if you have a notice in the bucket, you'll see that it's grown quite considerably. So eventually when this dough is finished, it'll be somewhere up around here. So the folding and the tucking and the turning creates air in the dough and makes it lighter um, until it's ready to be scaled and folded. So again, what we do is we start, we just scrape down the sides like that. And then we go in with that folding technique, the same technique where you get your hand in, down to the bottom, pull it up into the middle. Okay, up into the middle, up into the middle, and then you can turn the bucket as you go. And it's fairly easy, it's not too physical, and we've given it another nice stretch and fold. And you can see the dough is almost one piece. So it's a lovely piece of dough, looking nice, I'm happy, and we've given it another fold, and we can leave it now for about 45 minutes, um, and it'll come up significantly in the next 45. Alright, so we've left this thing for about another 45 minutes, you can come and have a look, it's got up nicely, there's nice bubbles in it you can see it's risen up look at those lovely bubbles so the air is coming into the dough so all we're going to do is continue with the process and give it another fold and tuck and turn so again make sure your hands nice and moist scrape down the sides and you'll see the dough is becoming less sort of sticky so it's actually much nicer to work with you put a bit of water down like that and you do the same thing you go in and up and into the middle and you turn it and you just do that. Okay. And that's it. And uh, so now less vigorous than the earlier turns. Um, and we'll leave this for about an hour now and it should almost be ready to bake. So you can imagine if you've done this in your home and you're heading for the bakery, you could take your bucket and head off. So first thing we're going to do, we will just put our bucket down and we'll oil up our tinners. So here's a standard tin, it takes a kilogram of dough. So I know that I've got eight kilograms of dough there, so I'll need eight tins. This is called the dumping table. You just put lots of water on it. And then we have a little scale to check the other tinner, and off we go. So we take our bucket of dough, and and on she comes. Turn it into a rectangle, more or less. Like that. And then we're ready to scale our loaves. So we know we've got about eight kilos of dough, so we're going to make eight loaves. So. Cut it into half. So now that you have cut, uh, cut and shaped your doughs and placed it in the tins, you can just put it on the rack um, to rise um, and we can go ahead and light the oven. 
So from this point to baking is anything between half an hour and 40 minutes, depending on the temperature of the dough and how well it's been made. So in order to light the oven, we just use a tiny little piece of blitz and we light it up. We just pop it in there, into the oven over there. And then we just take a few twigs and we put them on top. Like that. And what we do is we'll stack sort of three parallel and then you can just start to stack. Like that. So now you can see that the fire is on its way. Um, and this oven takes about half an hour to warm up. So as the bread rises, um, so the oven heats up. Okay, so I'm just dusting a couple of these loads. It's not absolutely necessary, but sometimes gives you a better look. So I'll dust three, and you can see the difference between dusted and undusted. And uh, so now these loaves are ready to go in the oven. You can see when they level with the top of the tin like this, then we're ready for action. And I've got my little loading fork, which I use to load up the oven. So these are ready to go in. What I do, I pick three loaves up at a time like that. Um, move it over here. And then I just open up the oven like that. And I can pop them in. And I can take the next three. And then they go. Quite simple, really. And we need a little bit of, get, a little bit of uh, liquid just to get a bit of steam going. Um, So 28 minutes of baking time and they're ready to come out. If you want to, after about 15 minutes, you could turn them around in the oven. Um, because we're not baking on two shelves, we're just baking six loaves as a demo. Normally the, ovens, the loaves will go in and up and out, so you do turn them. So we'll just see how they come out. Okay, so we're just going to take one out to check. They know it is ready. So all I do is take it out and I've got my thermometer, turn it on, it's on the center, and then I just give it a little stab, see what it goes to. That's the timer going off. Needs to go over 90 degrees. Um, you can see it's at 85 already, 86, 7, 8. Okay, so this is pretty much ready to come out. And these are the ones that we dusted, so you can see the different look. This is the plain look and then the dusty look. And that's that really, yeah? So from bread in a bucket to the bakery, you bake them off, take them out of the tins and you go sell them. Or you eat them yourself. <laughs>